What is up, Madden 25 Gamers? Welcome to today's video, guys. In today's video, we are breaking down the Denver Broncos offensive and defensive depth charts for you. Before we get into our game of the week here, uh, real quick, I just want to run through this. We've got Peyton Manning, the quarterback, obviously a no-brainer. Uh, but as backups, there was a little bit of a debate going on about who to put as a backup. Uh, for me, I like Brock Osweiler. First of all, he's 6'7". Second of all, he has better acceleration than Zach Dysart. Another thing that he has better than Zach Dysart and even Peyton Manning is he's got 96 throwing power. That's incredible. Uh, it's one of the best throwing power rates in the game. Um, another thing that he does a little bit better than uh, Zach Dysart is his deep throw actually is seven points higher. Now, obviously Zach Dysart makes up for that in his short throw actually and medium actually, but in my opinion, the deep throw ball is a little bit more important in order to be pinpoint accurate on, and that's why I like to go with Brock Osweiler as the backup quarterback. Running back, I've got no Sean Marino here. Uh, pretty much left him, for the most part, stock. Uh, really, running backs, guys, I like to look for uh, agility and acceleration. Um, another thing I like to look for is catch. And you see here, no Sean Marino has the best catch rating. Monte Ball has uh, got really good catch in traffic at 72. Um, Virgil Green would be a great backup if you uh, if if Noah Marino gets hurt, you might consider putting in Virgil Green because we don't use fullbacks in our Atlanta playbook, so you could check that out. But uh, a lot of good stuff here, guys. A lot of a lot of good components here to this offense, and Noah Marino should do a pretty good job for you. Um, a spell back that you might consider, you know, putting him in in some different situations uh, where you kind of want to go a little fire and ice here with Ronnie Hillman. Ronnie Hillman has really, uh, really, really good speed and acceleration and agility and all that, so you could throw him in. Um, um, and then Monte Ball has that trucking. No Sean Marino is kind of that balanced all-around back. So you can kind of use that uh, to kind of game plan what you want to do as far as if you late-game situation, you want to go Monte Ball. I mean, he's got 91 trucking, another high rating that he has here. And you see he's got the best carry on the team right next to No Sean Marino, but he's still got that 91 trucking. Uh, you know, But in a situation where you want to get a big play, you might go Ronnie Hillman, but do be aware that he doesn't quite have the trucking and carrying rating that Monte Ball does. Okay, so fullback. They really don't. We don't really go fullback here. What I like to do is put in like a couple tight ends at the backup, so that I can get them on special teams, uh, hands team stuff like that. Wide receivers. Uh, I left them stock, and uh, I like to. Most people will put Welker at the three for the way that I run the Z spot and the way that I run the bunch. You want to have Welker at the two uh, because this way Welker is going to be able to use his great catcher driving. Now, real quick, a shocking thing I found when I dug through these. Eric Decker actually has better catch in traffic than Wes Welker, better catch than Wes Welker, and uh, obviously better spectacular catch. So that may be something to look out for, but I couldn't justify putting Welker in the situation where out of that bunch play, we're going to have to use our catch with Welker. I'd rather him be on that hitch route. We can use all that as his agility and acceleration. Things like that to make that easier user catch for us. Uh, Demarius Tabas, obviously, clear cut number one, no questions about it. Tied in Julius Thomas. Uh, I went back and forth on Jacob Tammy versus Julius Thomas, but I ended up going with Julius Thomas, uh, mainly for his speed and his spectacular catching. We like to put in two offensive tackles in behind the tight end situations where we want to get them on the special teams unit. Uh, offensive line, I left it stock. I was trying to justify, uh, you know, changing it up a little bit, but really couldn't find anything in the ratings that would have told me to change up the ratings, so I left it like this. Left in, now this is important, guys. We're running a 2 4 5 here, so it's really important that you focus here on this depth chart. Uh, I've got Malik Jackson. I think this guy's Madden Jim. His speed is, is really not that good, but he's got pretty good strength for what we're going to ask him to do. He's going to be that defensive tackle, basically, in the 2 4 5. You see, he's got 86 acceleration. Another high rating that he has here, another good thing that he'll do for us in the defense, is he's got really good tackling at almost 90. He's got 87 power moves, which is uh, actually uh, top tier right up there with Von Miller. You see Von Miller has 87 power moves as well. Another thing that he has here is uh, 84 block shedding, which is you know pretty decent for a defensive end. And he'll do a nice job down in the trenches. He's kind of a hybrid defensive end, defensive tackle guy. He's six foot six. Could just by not putting him on the field with all those attributes. But if you guys want a more speedy guy, you might consider Robert Ayers uh, or you know maybe... Uh, Sean Phillips or any of those guys. So, But I personally think Malik Jackson belongs down in the trenches where I've got him. Right in, I go Terrence Knighton. This is, uh, again, the right end in this defense is defensive tackles. And uh, I want to at least have my best block shedding guy down there, and that's Terrence Knighton. Uh, 93 strength, another high rating he has. I think he has 95 block shedding um, and uh, 91 tackling. So 
just a beast down there. Can't have it. Can't not. Cannot not have him on the field uh, in a defense where you're going to be running against offenses that can run and pass. Defensive tackles. We don't actually have defensive tackles in this defense. Uh, but if you ever want to go like down to a three-four out of the New York Jets, Jets book, I would suggest this guy Sione Fua. He's got 91 strength. His block shed's not quite that good, but his strength. He's not going to be able to be moved. Um, and that's kind of what I look for in a, in a 3-4 nose tackle. You know, not necessarily you need to get off the blocks. I think the defensive ends need to get off the blocks. But the defensive tackle needs to be able to hold down and kind of anchor two or three blockers so that everybody else can use all their block sheds and things like that to get free. Left outside linebacker, guys. This is the right of screen defensive end in the 2-4-5. I've got Bon Miller there. Uh, reason I have him there, he is my best run stopper. Most people run buck sweep and strong power to the right. Another reason I have him there is because I feel like the 2 5 is weak to the right because we only have five guys to the right as opposed to the left side where we have th- uh, six. So, uh, you know, that's kind of why I put him there. Obviously, the backups, we want to go with guys with high hit power. Uh, the backup guy that I think you should consider in case Von Miller gets hurt is Quantaria Smith because Quantaria Smith has, again, 86 acceleration. Uh, and another good statistic that he has, a couple of good stats that he has here, He's got 85 hit power, which is pretty good. He's got 88 power moves. Uh, and then uh, another thing he does well is a decent zone coverage uh, for a linebacker at 60, 60. So he'll get the job done for us uh, in a backup situation. Middle linebacker, I went with Nate Irving and Danny Trevathan. You need to order them just like that because you want to have Nate Irving blitzing on uh, some of our blitzes. You want to have Trevathan in coverage all the time. If you set him up like this, that's how that will work out. Um, the good thing to note about Nate Irving is he has 83 hit power here. Uh, if you'll see here, he's got uh, actually he's got 88 hit power, so he's got one of the best hit sticks on the team, and he has almost 80 power moves and 83 block shedding. So really good player there, Nate Irving. Uh, I think he's one of the hidden gems on this team. Right outside linebacker, I've got Sean Phillips. I was thinking about putting Nate Irving there, but I couldn't justify it, uh, leaving Sean Phillips on the bench. The one thing about Sean Phillips, he doesn't have really good speed or strength. He doesn't really even have good acceleration. I mean, it's all right, but for a guy of his caliber, you know, I think it should be a little bit better. What he does do well, uh, again, this is where I hate him. He doesn't tackle it with a crap, but neither does Robert Ayers, so I can't say anything about it. Hit power is only 85. thought it would be a little higher. And uh, power moves is only 87. You see, it's the same exact power moves as Ayers. So, I mean, he's not that real. He's not really that much better. I mean, Quantario Smith actually has higher power moves. Uh, so, you know, just a lot of things where he could grow. Uh, but I just couldn't justify not having him in there. The one thing I hate is that 65 block shot. He's 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 gonna get tore up over there. But I know with him being on the left side, it's a lot more uh, of a stronger side for the defense. And harder to run at that side corners i did something a little different i'm benching champ bailey uh obviously champ bailey is a long time pro in my opinion i don't like the fact that he only has 88 speed another thing that i don't like is that his press rating uh it's just not quite where i want it to be i mean he just doesn't do anything that really sticks out at you i mean 73 press is eh, it's really not that good 85 86 man in zone that's not really that good for a number one corner uh, play recognition, that's great, 95. But, I mean, outside of that, there's really no rich man. I mean, the tackling is tackling is suspect at 65. I mean, that's good, but it's not great. Uh, the catching, he does catch 72. But, I mean, look up here. I mean, you got same thing with DRC. So, there's just not a whole lot that Champ Bailey does that makes me want to put him in a game. So, I'll put him in there in quarter situation, but I'm not putting him in in a base package. You see here I've got uh, Chris Harris and DRC. And uh, you'll see here the reason I've got these guys in there, if you take a look at their man and zone ratings, 91 and 96, uh, pretty effective there. They've also, they don't have really good press. The reason I have them in there at that spot because if I run two men under, you don't need a good press rating for two men under. So there you go. Um, I was going back and forth here on this position with, with uh, kind of putting a guy in there. And I was thinking, you know, should I put Quentin Jammer in there? Should I get, put a guy in with better run stopping capabilities? I ended up putting Quentin Jammer in there, but now that I look at it again, I think I'm going to change my mind. I'm actually going to put in this Madden gym here, uh, John Boykett, as I hope that's how you say his name. But you see here, he has 75 zone, uh, but another thing that he has, I mean, 75 zone is pretty good for his safety and a bad, you know, a bad safety at that. But what he has also is that 66 block shed, which is, it's pretty good. Um, it's not quite as good as uh, Bruton's here. So you, if you wanted to run stop, you could put Bruton in there. 
but uh, he's got 82 or 85 pursuit, which is a little bit better than Bruton. Another thing that he has really good is 70 tackling. Uh, obviously, his pass rushing skills are suspect, but that's because he's a corner. Uh, his hip power is not, you know, it's not anything to write home about. I mean, Quentin Carter has a little bit better hip power than that, way better. I mean, 92 hip power. But when you consider the fact that they don't block shed any better, they don't pursue anywhere near as good, I have to go with Boykett. That's just me. But uh, I go with Boykett at the at the third slot, and then I throw Jammer at the fourth slot for diamond quarter situations when I want to press with him. In a diamond quarter situation, I'll typically RB sub in Champ Bailey to that package or Kayvon Webster. All right, free safety. I end up going Michael Huff. I love me some Michael Huff. I love the 92 speed. Uh, obviously, if you want to, if you want to go the hip power route, you could put Quentin Carter in. But I go Mike Huff there, and free safety is my user player. Strong safety, I end up going Raheem Moore. Uh, I feel like that's the you know the strong safety is the most important position of this defense because it's going to hold down the run and it needs to be a, a, a force in zone coverage because it's going to be covering a side that I can't get to. So I think that my you know I like to put him there. I got Champ Bailey basically backing up every position. You see, I mean he back he backs up the strong safety. He's going to back up the free safety, and we can insert him at any time in diamond quarter situations. Kick returner Trenton Holiday probably turn to Trenton Holiday. I don't think that's any uh, question in there. But uh, that's my Denver Bronco depth chart. Be sure to take, check out the the uh, full game later today, guys.